Hello and welcome to another episode of Podcast DX, the show that brings you interviews with people just like you, whose lives were forever changed by a medical diagnosis. I'm Ron. I'm Jean Marie. And I'm Lita. Collectively, we're the hosts of Podcast DX. On today's show, we're talking about the complex world of multiple chronic illnesses with Veronica. Veronica is a PhD student at University of Indiana, I believe. And she will be giving us her, her thoughts on being chronically ill during a pandemic that is still ongoing and the importance of masking. Thank you for joining us today, Veronica. Thank you for having me. Veronica, this is Ron. And I guess to just start, uh, what exactly uh, are we going to talk about today? I know Lita just mentioned the chronic illness, but... I believe there's something specific that you wanted to go into. Oh, yes. Um, I would like to talk about how the pandemic isn't over and that chronically ill and medically vulnerable people need everyone to wear masks and protect each other as a part of community care. Excellent. Excellent point. Veronica, I am also a very strong advocate for masking. And in the years since it started, I can count on one hand the number of times that I put myself or my family at risk due to a forgotten mask. I have a theory that if you walk into a large crowd, have everyone stop what they're doing and raise their hands, if they have already had COVID, the hands going up would be attached to the bodies walking around without masks. I personally think that those who, that aren't immunocompromised who aren't fragically, you know, medically fragile, who caught COVID and survived, they don't understand the importance of masks for those who have medical conditions, putting them at greater risk of severe reaction to the virus. And I'm assuming that that's your theory as well. Um, yes, that is. And it's also been my experience. A lot of people that I know that don't wear masks are um, completely able-bodied people mm -hmm. and They've had, I know some people who have had COVID at least um, five to seven times. Wow. And they're still, they're still able-bodied, but mm -hmm. they still don't wear masks. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So, Veronica, um, earlier when we were trying to start this a little earlier, you had mentioned some information. Um, are you yourself? or any of your family members uh, medically fragile? And what do you do to protect yourself now that the majority of the people are going about life as if nothing ever happened, like there was no pandemic? Um, so I am uh, disabled. I have chronic migraines. I'm on day 198 of a severe migraine. I also have a high-risk partner and an immunocompromised toddler. So what do we do to mm -hmm. protect ourselves right now? Um, we are still isolating. We've been isolating um, for pretty much the duration of the pandemic. Um, and we've adjusted our boundaries to how other people live their lives as if the pandemic isn't happening. Mm -hmm. um, so that looks like I work from home. I ask for work accommodations for school. My partner stays at home with our son and we all um, mask up as soon as we go outside because there have been a lot of cases of people getting COVID outside and mm -hmm. I'm not willing to take that risk. So we wear, um, all of us now wear N95s as we go outside and eye protection. Okay. Okay. And, and we also do like grocery pickup and stuff like that too. Okay. And Veronica, do you find yourself going um, out of your way? Okay. Do you like go out of your way to avoid crowds? Are you... Um, you know, like do you, you said you do like the grocery pickup. So if you want to take your child somewhere, do you like maybe go out earlier or later to avoid crowds? Or um, in other words, what do you have to do to avoid mass groups of people and um, to limit how much exposure you are putting 
or, or how much you are exposing yourself to you you're that I cannot talk <laughs> how much you're exposing yourself and your family to potential um, hazards such as COVID influenza RSV the common cold right. RSV and leprosy okay um, so right now we avoid crowds um, mm-hmm. at any cost okay. um, we have a lot of outside time, but I also, thankfully, on Google, they show like busy times mm-hmm. at outdoor parks. So um, thankfully, our city has a community orchard right next to a playground. Oh. And we get there really, really early in the morning so that we can like go pick some berries. Mm-hmm. And then also my son can like go down the slide and swing and stuff. Oh, that's fantastic. I love the idea of a community orchard. <laughs> yeah. And me I'll, too. And Veronica, how do you deal with people that are, well, to put it bluntly, pretty callous uh, about this or basically the needs of people that feel the same way that you do? You know, that uh, masking is Well, yeah, and for example, we had a um a tag or a garage sale recently and someone came up to us and basically berated us for wearing masks. Mhm. And um which was kind of shocking. Yeah. Right. So how do, how do you respond to that? Um, so I'm sorry that happened to you. Uh, so when that happens so far, I've been, um, harassed with my son in three States wow. since the pandemic has started and we talk about it. Mm-hmm. Um, we talk about it with our son after the fact and, it's kind of a hard thing to protect a little curious mind from Mm -hmm. of like, why is this person yelling at us about masks? And uh, so we have conversations about that with them. And then I'm also lucky to be part of a parent coveting group that I found on Facebook where I'm able to talk with my friends about those experiences and Um, I also talk about it with my therapist. Um, But in the moment, it's kind of like a a flight fighter freeze Mm -hmm. kind of situation. Mm -hmm. So just try to remember to take deep breaths when people are yelling at us with our child. (laughs) Yeah, I'm Mm -hmm. so sorry. Yeah, absolutely. Well, as a follow up to that, now that's the general public. Now, when you go to the doctor, you know, you're going to your healthcare provider, uh, do you insist that they wear a mask or have you gotten like kickback or from them or negative, you know, responses to you still wearing a mask? Thankfully, we haven't gotten any kickback from medical providers. Um, my neurologist recently stopped masking, mm-hmm. but he carries a mask around with them. Um, but as far as pediatricians go, they are willing to wear a mask and we ask as soon as we get to the check in hey can the medical provider please wear a mask for our appointment and if they come in and they're not wearing a mask then we ask them please leave and Mm -hmm. um put on a mask okay good good for you yeah veronica how have you managed your own chronic illness during the pandemic um I mean, we weren't going to really just discuss migraines, but I don't think I've ever talked to anybody with migraines as bad as you've got them. Yeah, I'm glad you have a neurologist, um, but wow. Yeah, I mean, this has got to be horrendous for you. Yeah. Um, So I kind of manage it with a lot of sleep, and I'm grateful that my professors and my advisors work with me for letting me able to work from home. Okay. Um, but I also, there's these, um, migraine hats that are, um, like jelly ice Mm -hmm. that you can put in the freezer Mm -hmm. that really help with the pain. And I'm also on some different medications, but unfortunately none of the medications that we've tried so far have gotten completely rid of this migraine. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's kind of become your new normal. That's a good question. Um, It feels like it's become my new normal. Um, I've had migraines since I was three years old. So I'm used to having chronic migraines. Um, But this one that's almost 200 days in, it gets a little depressing. Mm -hmm. Um, Understandably. I've been asked like, hey, are you right? Um, I've been asked, is this 
uh, that question of like, is this your new normal? And I'm like, I hope not. Yeah. I really hope not. Um, because it does put a damper in my life. Mm -hmm. as far Sorry, as I didn't mean any offense. Yeah, yeah. Since, play hard with my son. Since, oh, no worries. But since this is new for you, have they done like MRIs or things like your CTs? Have they looked to make sure there's nothing that changed? Oh, yeah. Okay. Have they done an MRI where they monitor your, um, your cerebral spinal fluid flow? A cine? They it's, haven't. It's a weird, it is a weird test. I know we actually went to, I think it's Simon's, the actual manufacturer. Of the MRI. Uh, yeah, for it. But it's an interesting. Um, so it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a moving uh, MRI and they can watch and see whether or not the, there's any yeah, issues the spinal with the cord fluid is getting stuck up anywhere. And maybe that could be causing the migraine. So That's, it's called yeah. a CINE, a C I N E. We just want to do something for you. And I know we're, you know, not going to be able to fix or, or cure you, but please know that we are heartily feeling for you. And boy. Yeah. Yeah. That's, it's, uh, sorry. I, I just, thank you. I, I, oh, yep. The other thing is an upright MRI. Yeah, it's, to it's, make sure that the the there isn't any change. The skull itself isn't putting pressure uh, when you're when you're upright it, versus when you're laying just down. Looking at the anatomy, the anatomy yeah. moves, and when you're upright and you get a cine MRI, it can actually give a different picture than if you're laying down on a typical MRI machine. So I would actually add to that cine having an upright MRI. But I'm sure you know your neurologist. Yeah, I mean, I would ask, we don't yeah, we absolutely. don't give we don't give medical advice, but no. it helped us to figure out what was wrong with Gene, and it did lead to some major surgery. But you know, at least we found out what was causing it. And if it would have just taken away my Thank migraines, you for that. I, we would have been thrilled. Yeah, but also, I mean, like I I do infusions, and um, I get that, and Botox, and medications. And ice, and actually, there's an ice machine where you fill up a little cooler with ice water, and then it pumps it through like a helmet. Well, it's like a hat that right. you wear, so it's like really cold, which right. can be a re uh, relief as well. Right. But it's yeah. kind of like what they use wow. for orthopedic yeah. injuries. You know, you wrap it over your shoulder Sorry, or whatever. We, we're going off but on it, a tangent. But they have it for the I, head. When she said 198 yeah. days, yeah. I want to cry. Yeah, I mean, we, we, and give you a hug. Yeah, we definitely feel for you. Okay, but Veronica, what role does nutrition play in your life? Um, both supporting, you know, you nutrition as far as um, preventing um, any immune system issues, and also avoiding triggers for migraines. Is food a trigger for you? Food, thankfully, isn't a trigger for me. Okay. Um, but I am on an anti-inflammatory diet, okay. so I avoid a lot of um, processed foods. Um, we don't really ha eat a lot of processed foods. My thankfully, my husband um, worked in a kitchen for a long, long time, so he knows how to make almost everything from scratch. Oh. Um, <laughs> so a lot of homemade meals and everything like that. Oh, very cool. And, and yeah, yeah, and having fresh fruits in the area, um, that's a great community initiative. We have um, the uh, farm here where you can you get allotments to grow your own fruits and vegetables. And um, that's a community um, service that we have in, in our town. It, that's absolutely fantastic. But I'll turn it over to Ron. <laughs> So, Veronica, a little earlier you mentioned about you going to the park. You would do it at earlier times and so forth to avoid the crowds. Uh, could you go a little more in depth about um, how you modify your daily activities so that you and your husband and your child does not um, come down with COVID or any other illness? Um, that's a really good question. I try to ask those. Oh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we've turned almost everything into virtual for our toddler. Um, he, it, thankfully with that coveting parent group, we have weekly circle time, um, via zoom where he can learn about different, um, subjects like senses and dinosaurs and animals and the planet. 
and um, my partner also does um, he games a lot with all of his friends online so that's pretty much everything um, besides the park adventures and the grocery pickup is virtual and I think that answers my next question social yeah okay yeah, yeah. Uh, so what do you feel is the most misunderstood aspect of COVID that's a good question I think the most misunderstood thing is the aspect of masking and how it, asymptomatic people can also still spread COVID mm -hmm. even if they're not wearing a mask. And I also think there's been this whole push of like masks don't work, mm -hmm. even though masks have been around since way before 2020. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that's the most misunderstood right now. Yeah, and it, if masks didn't work, then why are medical professionals still wearing them? And, uh, you know, especially, you know, when, what, why, I don't know. I don't no, know I'm, I'm, I'm chuckling because of what we were talking about off air about the flat earthers, and maybe I shouldn't oh, be bringing it up, no, but it's kind of uh, like the same concept. Right, right. Well, and actually, because um, like we have, my, Lita and I have not had COVID yet, and we kind of went to extremes and basically fell back on everything we learned about treat, caring for someone who is extremely immunocompromised after an organ transplant. So everything from not getting ice in your drinks at restaurants to, um, you know, cleaning off all the groceries when they come home to leaving packages out for 72 hours before, you know, okay. touching them, washing your hands frequently. Um, we actually changed to a different hand soap because uh, we are washing our hands so frequently and obviously wearing masks. Um, and we haven't had it yet. But also, like, we didn't get the flu. We didn't get the uh, cold. And um, now we're learning, you know, not, not that it's extraordinarily rare, but even, like, leprosy is also spread, or Hansen's disease, is also spread through respiratory droplets. Um, so, I mean, there are just so many things that are spread that way that um, it seems like masking is just a pretty good overall idea. And I think they, you know, when people have had conferences and then they leave the conference and a large majority of those people who are not wearing masks are ill after the fact, it all proves that masks work and we should all be wearing them. Yes, I agree. You know, I'm just going to add this because I just got mm -hmm. out of rehab. Mm -hmm. I would say less than 5% of the people in there were mm -hmm. still wearing masks. Wow. Yeah. Well, I, I think it's funny. Every time I go to my neurologist, wow. um, I wear a mask. And the nurse always says, you don't, um, have to wear you don't have to wear a mask in here anymore. And I said, oh, you know, that's... And then she'll go on to cough. And <laughs> every single time, I'm like, <laughs> I will still be wearing my mask. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're definitely with you on this. And, and support you. And we're very sorry for anyone who has um, expressed anything negative towards your very rational and thoughtful approach to maintaining your health and the health of your family. Yes. Okay. Sorry. I will get off my high horse. Ron, time to get no, on. No, no. I, uh, <laughs> <okay>. <laughs> I was waiting to see if Veronica wanted yeah, to I'm add sorry. anything. No worries. No worries. I don't mean to talk at you, Veronica. <laughs> And I do have a million questions. Oh, yeah. Most of them are about geography, but um, I'll let Ron go ahead. <laughs> I have to do my professional voice now. Okay. Now that we have a bit of a background information, it's time to talk about our initiative. To better serve our listening audience, we are an affiliate of a major medical supplier that's located here in the United States. You will find affiliate links on our website, Podcast DX. They aim to tailor specific medical supplies and equipment based on your diagnoses to make sure it is less stressful than looking through an entire catalog for what you might need. We are open to your suggestions and will adjust our offerings based on what you, our listeners, find helpful. But now let's return to our show. Okay. Um, Veronica, with your own personal um, chronic illness, do any in in migraines you know in particular do any alternative therapies like massage therapy acupuncture acupressure heat or you were saying ice help alleviate your symptoms um so before the pandemic started i was seeing a massage therapist regularly mm -hmm. which was really really helpful um and seeing that massage therapist actually got rid of 
my previous longest migraine of my life, which was like two, three months long. Um, but I also use a heating pad um, okay. at the base of my skull to help with those tight muscles. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And have you considered um, signing yourself and your your partner up for a, blah, 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 a virtual massage therapy class so you can learn to help and support each other? Um, honestly, I didn't know those existed, oh. but I will definitely write that down and find out. A lot of community colleges will that. teach um, massage therapy to partners so you can uh, help, you know, one another that way. Because I think, um, and also you can, you know, if it, it's, yeah, extremely helpful. Well, it can be extremely Thank helpful. You I don't want to say it will be extremely helpful, but yeah. It's good to have someone that knows how to give a good massage. Good advice. So, Veronica, what are some maybe less apparent parts uh, of your life that have been affected by having this chronic illness or being medically fragile since the start of the pandemic? And you talked about going out. Uh, what about, uh, again, things that the listener might not be thinking about? Um, time with family, um, with my... Uh outside of my little family, not being mm -hmm. able to see a lot of my family members. Um, none of my family members mask anymore, which is hard and difficult. And it's also hard too, because I had my son right before the pandemic started. So we didn't really have that village mm -hmm. to help raise our son. Mm -hmm. And um, unfortunately, while some some of my family members were willing to mask to see us. No one was really uh, willing to do tests and isolate to be able to see us in the way that they would want to see us without mm -hmm. masks. Mm -hmm. But now our trust has been shot um, with being able to see anyone because they're living like the pandemic isn't even happening anymore. Right. So do you do... Um like the Zoom or the video, or do you just not really have that communication? Um, we do video chats. Um, and sadly, my son has gotten to the point where he's asking to go visit his grandparents and his cousins. Mm -hmm. um, and we just say, when it's safer, we can. Mm -hmm. um, but since we've had a to adjust a lot of our boundaries to how other people live. Mm -hmm. I don't really foresee us seeing a lot of family members anytime soon. That's a shame. Have but... you been able to do like virtual, um, you know, where the, where your, his, the, your child's grandparents can read a, read a book virtually or, um, you know, things of that nature? Um, recently, my mom started playing words with friends with him virtually, Aww. which is really fun for him mm -hmm. um, because he can already read. Um, but we haven't tried this reading a story thing virtually yet, but that's a really good idea. I'll try and see if they'd be willing to read him stories that way. Okay. And I know a virtual whatever it is doesn't make up for like, you know, a hug or anything, but um, we're definitely sending virtual hugs your way. Sorry if that's too personal. Thank you. I just, I, the whole migraine thing, I, I, I just want to cry. Veronica, what are you looking forward to doing in the next year? That's a really good question. Um, I haven't really been thinking about the next year, really. Um, it's been more of a like day to day, month to month um, planning process. I, I am looking forward to going to pick um, some apples in September with my son at the orchard. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to the classes that I'll be taking this fall. Okay, good. It's always good to look forward to something. Mm -hmm. And Veronica, what support have you received during your journey? Um, what role have your friends played and online support groups? And even your instructors and other students? Um, so that support looks a lot different than um, what I was hoping for mm -hmm. and what I was told that I would receive. Um, as far as my academic community, 
I really appreciate my academic community, um, but there's a lot of in-person gatherings and no mm -hmm. virtual options mm -hmm. that are safely accessible to me. Mm -hmm. um, so that's frustrating, but I do have, there are a couple of professors in my department that still do wear masks and are willing to meet outside. Um, and then the other support that I've received is mostly from my COVIDing parent group and my partner. Um, my partner has been a rock star in helping me. Um, some days I can't even walk to the other room, so he'll help me walk um, just to the living room. Mm -hmm. And he also helps um, like prepare my meals and like fill my water bottle. And unfortunately, one thing that has happened to the pan with the onset of the pandemic and how it's been ongoing is I've lost a lot of friends mm -hmm. um, just because of our different thoughts and our different values around the pandemic, um, which is which is heartbreaking. I lost a friend that I had for almost 20 years. Mm -hmm. And um, it's hard to not have that support um, from them, but I have gained a lot of support from my COVIDing parent group. Good, excellent. Veronica, what role has self-care played in your life recently? Um, so self-care for me looks a lot different um, with this migraine versus when I don't have a migraine. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, but a lot of rest and less screen time. Um, I also, I've been meditating since 2006. So I do a lot of meditations and I also try, I'm, I'm not an artist by any means. Um, but painting with my son has been a really, I think, an act of self-care for both of us, just being mm -hmm. able to sit and paint with each other. That's wonderful. Yeah, that sounds, that sounds really wonderful. Well, Veronica, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to, to talk with us about what's going on with you and the pandemic and all of that. If our listeners want to learn more about you, how can they find you? Oh, um, so I'm on Twitter. Um, at, my name on Twitter is Veronica Hanway, and I'm also on TikTok. My screen handle is at GeoHippie, and I, you can also find me and my email address at uh, the IU Geography website. And um, yeah, I didn't really think about that. <laughs> Okay. That's okay. a good question. All well, right. those are all all good ways to contact you, I think. Right. And we'll look forward to um, reading your dissertation, um, and especially Lita, who's huge on climate change and yes. water usage. Yes. She's already a huge fan. Yes. Did you want to end the interview with that joke again? Um, no, no. We'll, we'll just leave that joke. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, please, <laughs> no, not <laughs> again. Don't torture. Don't us. encourage me to tell jokes. Right. Okay, sorry. I thought it was funny, but I'm easily amused. Uh -huh. I also thought it was funny to put that background there because Ron's been in um, it, it, medical it, rehab because of his shoulder injury for two months now. So I thought it would, I'm make, out him, now. I'm but not, it I'm would not. make him feel more at <laughs> yeah. home. So we got a backdrop of that a, looks hospital like a hospital room. room. Yeah, that's but the type of also, sense of humor that these ladies oh, have. Okay. They did not think that was funny either, but I thought <laughs> that was really funny. So, well, um, we didn't walk in with the bedpan, so, you know. Yeah. Good point. Yeah. yeah, we didn't put a bedpan in the bathroom either. So, um, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Sorry. Well, Veronica, um, we hope that you enjoy the rest of your day and stay cool because um, it's been miserably hot muggy, everywhere. Muggy, yes. yeah. And, um, yeah, we, we uh, look forward to hearing that you've broken the migraine um, yeah. run because... Yes. World records for migraines, not no, fun. No, you don't want to get in that book, no. book of world records. No. Oh, yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. Yeah, we wish you all the best. Thank you. And if our listeners have any questions or comments about today's show, they can contact Jean Marie personally. Nope. <laughs> 
or they can contact all of us at podcastdx at yahoo.com. And if you have a moment to spare, please give us a review wherever you get your podcast. And as always, please remember that this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Lita is not a qualified healthcare provider, <laughs> and she cannot write you a prescription for those MRIs that she recommends um, and because she is not a healthcare provider. Always seek the advice of your physician or the qualified health care provider health care provider blah, with any questions you may have regarding medical condition or treatment before undertaking a new health care regime and never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something you've heard on this podcast. Till next week.